So we've talked in the previous section about tension and we've made some arguments about ropes or strings that are under uh, equilibrium conditions and we've talked about how the tension must be uniform throughout. So the equilibrium condition allowed us to simplify something which we're now going to talk about is what happens if the rope itself is actually accelerating. So it's still true that the tension is going to be the same throughout. We're still going to consider that. And we will point out the case where that would change. But let's now think about a situation where there is an acceleration. And this first picture shows two blocks connected together by a string. And there is a net force to the right. So because of that, we're going to say that there is an acceleration to the right. Now hopefully you recognize now in acceleration condition that the acceleration of block A must equal the acceleration of the rope must equal the acceleration of block B. And that's true because these things are tied together. The rope is doing the tying and B are at either end. As long as the string does not, does not stretch or um, go limp, sag down, this is going to be true. And a situation where it does stretch is way beyond the scope of intro physics. So now let's think about the tensions. We see that the tension, or and again in general the force, but these are both pulling forces, of A on the string and the string on A are going to be a Newton's third law pair. The tension, so the force of the block B on the string pulls to the right, and the string pulls to the left on block B. So if everything is accelerating to the right, we can start to think a little bit about net forces here. In the case of um, our original situation, this is an external force, right? A rope doesn't push. So the only way it can accelerate to the right is if there's some pulling happening by, say, a hand or something you don't see. So that's fine. So if we look at block B, and we're not going to worry about the forces in the uh, x in the y direction, right? So x hat is the horizontal direction, y hat is vertical. We're only going to think about the horizontal direction. We see that there's two forces here. There's this x um, internal force, and then there is my tension of S on B. So now if there is that acceleration to the right, so a net force to the right, then this rightward facing force must be bigger. Now if we consider block A, the situation is simpler since the rope, my color switching is not working. There's only one force in the horizontal direction and that's the string on A. So this isn't too hard uh, when we think about that. But let's take a moment and think about what's happening to the string. This is where it gets a little more subtle. We've said that the string on A pulls to the right. That's what gives us our net force for block A, which gives us our rightward acceleration. We have two forces on block B. The external force must be bigger than the tension in order for block B to accelerate to the right. So this is important enough. I've tried to type it out clearly. Hopefully there's no typos. So let's think about just the rope, right? Remember that any time you're doing Newton's second law, which is net force being equal to mass times acceleration, we need to actually think about one specific object. I called it a rope here, but it's actually a string, sorry. The only reason that I'm clarifying that is so that S makes more sense. So we're talking about the X direction force. Again, always a good idea to actually label what your coordinate system was, so X and y directions. So we're only worried about x. And when I look at my string, right, my string is here. I have a force to the right, which is block B on the string. I have a force to the left, which is block A on the string. And again, we know that the tension here on each end is a Newton's third law pair. So this must be equal to the mass of the string, that's what this is, times the acceleration of the string. And we had that acceleration constraint. 
So we know that the acceleration of the constraint, uh, the acceleration constraint is that the acceleration of the string must be equal to the acceleration of block B and block A. So A is not zero. But here's where we get into the tricky thing. We have these two tensions that are Newton's third law pairs on each end. And what do we think the mass of the string is? And this is one reason why the book uses the word string and not rope. If you think of a rope, you might think of it being very heavy. I know that there's an exercise that exists where you like shake ropes up and down, I guess. But if it's a string, you think of it being very, very light. So mathematically, something interesting happens here. If we say that the mass of the string goes to zero, that means that the tension due to B on S is the same as A on S. Why does that matter? Because if these two things are equal, that means that these two things are equal because of the whole Newton's third law. So this is why we talk about ideal strings or ideal ropes. We actually say that they are massless. And the reason we get we want to do that is because that allows us to say that even if the rope is accelerating, the tension is the same on each end. So this is something that I've perhaps gone through in excruciating detail, but the main point is we say the string or the mass, the rope is massless, and then we just get to say the tension is the same everywhere. Uh, there is a tutorial on mastering physics in the pre-class tutorials that actually goes through what changes if the rope actually has a mass, if the string has a mass, because then you have to think about each little piece of this having a net force because it has a mass, and the only way it will do that is if tension is actually changing throughout it. Um, so that's hard, and in general we don't do that. So the important thing here is, again, we say the string has zero mass, which allows us to say that tension is equal throughout. Once we have said that the string has zero mass, we now get to say that the tension is the same throughout. So the tension of A on S and B on S were equal, which means that the tension here were equal. And again, this happened because our string was ideal, which meant that the mass equaled zero. A nice thing happens now. Because we originally had four forces, but two of the, we had a Newton's third law pair here and a Newton's third law pair here, but because we have simplified the string to be an ideal condition where the mass is zero, we have said that the tension on each end is equal. That means that all four of these forces are equal. And that means that we get to simplify away what's happening with the string. We just get to take are two masses on the end and pretend that they are directly interacting with each other. Now I say pretend because they are not literally interacting with each other, they are interacting through this string. But if the string is massless, if it is ideal, we can have them effectively interact directly on one another. So again, when you see this dashed line, this is a Newton's third law pair. But what the book does is that whenever you are simplifying away a string or a rope, it writes as if there, pointing out that this is not truly a Newton's third law pair because technically it is just at one end, but because the string is ideal, we get to say these four forces are equal. So again, this is kind of a lot of argument to just get us to a simplification that we get to make but it's important to understand why we make it here. That in every other situation, when we're talking about contact forces and have Newton's third law pairs, they literally need to be in contact. This is the one exception, that A is in contact with the string and the string is in contact with block B. And it's not true directly that A and B are exerting a force on one another, they're exerting forces on the string but our simplification is such that all four of these are the same. So we're just going to simplify it down and act as if A and B are directly uh, 
impacting each other, that they are directly exerting forces on one another. But you should understand that that is a simplification that we've made.